Hey there, it's Tom Cheswick, professional photographer and digital retouch artist. And today we're going over extractions and we're going to be using On One Photo 2017 to perform our extraction. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about green screen photography and what makes an, e an image easy to extract. And the best way to show you that is to show you an image that was difficult to extract. And that would be this image of Hannah here. And that was because I used a cheap reflector um, as a background. And this reflector, you'll notice, has lots of wrinkles. And it's those shadow areas and those bright highlight areas that make extractions so much more difficult than they need to be. So instead, I want to recommend two products that I own. The first one is a Westcott collapsible background backdrop. And this is one of those where it looks like a reflector pops open, but it has this great green material that's wrinkle free. So when you look at it, there are no wrinkles. It's just perfect green. Another um, way to go is what we're going to be using today. And that is a roll of Savage Tech Green Paper. So both of those products work great. And let's take a look at that. So first we'll look at the software we're going to be using today on One Photo 2017. Then if we go over here, it's a cheap plug for my retouching services. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, if you have some retouching you'd like me to perform on your images, just go to Facebook and put in My Retoucher and you'll find uh, um, my images a way to contact me. But what I really wanted to show you is this Westcott collapsible background. This is a six by seven and one side is blue, one side is green. So if you're uh, photographing a sports team that has uh, green on it, you would just rotate it and use the blue side. Um, this is very convenient to take on location. It fits in this small little bag. The hardest part is <laughs> taking it out of the bag once you have it popped open. And the challenge is trying to fold it back up and get it back into the bag. So it may take you 30 minutes the first time you do that. But once you get the hang of it, it's um, very easy and very convenient. Um, Another, what we are using today is Savage's Tech Green Seamless Paper, and this also works very well. Um, it's also perfect if you're doing full-length exposure, um, full-length images. Okay, so let's head back into the program. We're going to cut this image out using um, tools from On One Photo. 2017 and the way that you get to that is we're in browse right now so we can see all of our different images we're just going to click on layers and this will open it up um, so we have the masking tools and there's two parts to a mask the basic cutout and then you want to go in and refine the edges so there's a few tools here there's the masking brush, it also has a perfect brush here which makes it color sensitive. We have the quick mask and we'll use that, um, I use that starting off with most of our green screen extractions. There's also a line mask or it's the kitty version of the Photoshop pen tool and I'm making fun of it but it is actually quite useful. Down below then are three tools to refine our mask. So we have the refine brush, the chisel mask, which is a very cool tool. I've never seen it on any other extraction program, and the blur mask. So to start off with, we're going to use our quick mask tool. And with that, you just click and drag over part of your image. It's going to read all that green that it finds and try to extract as much as as much as possible from the entire image. So as we see, it did a very good job. Then we're going to click over here, and there's a couple ways that we could do this. 
One is just to continue using um, our quick mass brush. So if we click and drag on that, it did a great job doing that. Sometimes you'll notice it doesn't do a very good job here. For, for some reason, it's just not able to read it. So I'm going to pretend that it can't to give you some other options in case you find difficulty too. So one of the options is our masking brush. And with that, we'll just make it a little bit smaller using the bracket keys. And with this, it reads the color under that minus symbol in the center of the circle. Also, though, if you click the command key, it will lock that color in. So if we click here and drag into the skin, it won't read the skin because it's only reading that green. So we'll come down and come up. My command key is still being pressed. So it's basically just reading that green. So that's another quick way. You'll notice sometimes it went a little bit overboard. If it does, just hit the X key and come on over and click in. The X key made it, it toggled from paint out to paint in mode. So that works very nice as well. We do have a little green here and we would use the refine edge tools when we get to that. Um, but I'm going to back up using Control Z just to show you another option, and that is that line tool. And with that, you just click around your image and it sets anchor points. And if we were using the Photoshop pen tool, that would allow us to um, actually add curves around the two anchor points. But for this image, we actually don't need it. We don't need as sharp of a cutout as, say, for a product because we're really going to have smooth edges, not highly defined, crisp edges. Okay, so once you have that, you would just click out and it would take it out. And as you can see, it's a very hard cutout. So we could go back and paint in a little if we need to. And we would do the same thing over here. Okay, so that's pretty good too. Um, there's a couple options. One, you can use the chisel tool and this is just going to knock it out just a little bit more right there. And then I would use the blur tool. And I have it on the lightest amount possible just to kind of get that soft edge, kind of like what we have out here. So that looks pretty good as well. So I would just, again, just come back a little bit. I'm going to lower the opacity of my paint in mask brush and just kind of make sure I have a nice soft edge here. Okay, and we'll paint out. Okay. Nice. Okay. Now what we're going to do is to use our refine brush and go around and just make sure that little edge is taking away off the skin. And on that, let's back up one second because I have color decontamination on and I don't want that right now. Okay, so just taking that edge. Perfect. There we go. 
go. Okay, so now if this was a cooking show, I would be throwing a pan into the oven, and 20 seconds later we would have our masterpiece dinner all finished. But instead you're going to have to watch every little stroke here as I go around Sage's um, body here. As you'll see, pretty much a lot of the extraction went really well, and we don't even need to come into this area. But I'm just doing it just to show you. And if it doesn't do a perfect job the first time, just go over. It gets better and better the more you get into an edge. Okay, so everything's looking really good. Okay, now we're getting into the challenging part for blonde hair. You'll actually see there is actually a little green left over um, in her hair when we come in and take this part out and that's because that green screen is one giant reflector and it's pushing a lot of green light back into the subject's hair. You won't notice it on uh, people with black hair or brunettes um, but you will notice it on blondes or people that have gray hair. So the way that it's easiest to attack that is to come up here and choose color decontamination. And what that does, it reads the color and then tries to neutralize the green cast for the color that it's reading. So it's doing a very nice job for that. Okay. Now when you use this, since it is reading color, it seems to read the color from the area that you start with. So I would never want to do one sweeping from this dark hair down to this light edge because it won't do a very good job. Um, so when there's transition, I just use smaller areas to sample from. And I find that gives a lot better results. And just like before, if you need to go over an edge more than once, it's not a problem. Okay, so now this seemed like it took a long time to do, but that's because I was talking about all the tools as we were going along. Um, if I was doing this just straight without any commentary, it would take roughly three to four minutes for me to have a perfect extraction. So now we have this image done. We are all ready for part two. So this ends part one, the extraction. Um, if you like these videos on YouTube, be sure to hit like. If you have some positive comments you want to put down, you can do that as well. And if you do need a retoucher, don't hesitate to contact me at my retoucher on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching the video, and get ready for part two.